Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You join New Beginnings Community Church. We thank and praise God for you joining us. Our pastor is Pastor William Beasley. Recording stopped. William Beasley Sr. We do not own the rights to the music, but we're going to ask you to join in as we uplift the name of the Lord. Amen. and every one of you that is, have elected to join us, fellowship with us tonight. Thank God for you. We know there are uh, many places that you could have been. You have elected to be with us tonight. We thank God for that. Thank God for you on Zoom and Facebook Live. Those that will view it on uh, YouTube a little later. Thank God for you. 
have another lesson tonight by uh, the help of the Lord and the power of the Holy Ghost. Have a little reading, quite a bit of reading to do tonight. And so we're going uh, we're gonna to get right into it. Have a little delay start, a little late start. And we're going to pray and we're going to get right into it. We're out here. The gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come tonight thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. Thank you for your, your unfailing compassion, Lord God. We thank you for your love and kindness. We thank you that you first love us, that you sacrificed your life, Lord God. We thank you for your salvation that you have brought unto us. We thank you for your redemption, Lord God, for the atoning of our sins. We thank you for dying on the cross, for shedding of your blood. But without the shedding of blood, we know that there is no uh, remission. So we thank you for all that you have done. We pray that you will speak to our hearts and minds on tonight. Give us the understanding that we need, Lord, that we would be prepared for your return. We know that you will soon, soon come. We thank you, we praise you, we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tonight we have another, uh, another lesson that is... We're still in Corinthians, still in 1 Corinthians. Uh, still Paul, the Apostle Paul, is still dealing with the Corinthian church. There is uh, there's a lot going on in the Corinthian church, the Corinthian church. And uh, he is still, he's still dealing. The Corinthian church was very, very immature. It was very worldly. There were a lot of a lot of paganistic celebrations. And it was it, it was just it was just a wild church. <laughs> it was a wild thing, a wild a wild culture, wild community. Mm -hmm. And so he received a letter. Paul received a letter from members of the church to uh, to address certain things, and that's what we're going to deal with tonight. And one of one of the things that uh, he was addressing tonight in this letter is the unity of the body, the unity of the body, and the gift gifting of the spirit, the unity of the body, gifting of the spirit. We're in the twelfth chapter of First Corinthians. Twelfth chapter of the first Corinthians. And on our worksheet, we have the 27th verse. But we're gonna go back up in our Bibles and we're gonna read quite a bit. We're gonna go, we're gonna go up to the 13th verse of the 12th chapter, and then we'll read down. I'll be reading the King James Version tonight. You can follow in whatever translation that you're using, and we'll get there together. I will begin in the uh, I will begin in the 13th I will begin with the 13th verse of the 12th chapter and it says for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be Jews or Gentiles whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into the one spirit 14 for the body is not one member but many 15. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? 16. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? 17. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? 18. But now has God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. Read that again, verse 18. But now has God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. 19. Talking about the physical body, your physical anatomy. God has uh, placed our members in the body. He has created the body as it pleased him. That's how he created the body. 
19. And if they were all one member, where were the body? 20. But now are they many members, yet but one body? 21. And I cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of thee. 22. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. For the sake of time, we're going to jump down to the 27th verse. No, I'm sorry. For the sake of time, we're going to uh, jump down to the 26th verse and read 26 and 27. 26 says, and whether one member suffer, all members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. 27. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. They had they were concerned, they had an issue with uh they had an issue with unity. They had an issue with unity. And what Paul is trying to get the church to understand that it is it is impossible it is impossible for a body to be divided All right. it is impossible All right. for a body to be divided your natural body there's no way for it to be divided he said your eye cannot tell your ear because you, because you're not the eye. I don't need you. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He is he he is addressing them because they are they're in an uproar. Because not only they they are in an uproar because uh, the spiritual gifts. Some some if we would if we would have if we would have began the twelfth chapter at the beginning. It, deal, it deals with the spiritual gifts and how that the, the spirit gifted members of the body. And so some members were at, at uneasy and upset, frustrated because certain members of the body had certain gifts and certain members of the body didn't. So Paul began to break down the physical body he said, the eye, the gift of the eye is to see. Mm -hmm. But it can't, it cannot tell the, the ear that it is not part of the body because it can't see. The ear's gift is to hear. Right. <laughs> All right. We have to understand, we, we have to understand what, what is happening. We have to understand what is happening in the church. It is no call. It is, there is no cause for division in the church because the body cannot be divided. Right. That is not the operation of the spirit of God when the body is divided. When the body is divided, that is not the operation of the Holy Ghost because okay. the body cannot be divided. Many members, we read, but one body. You have to hear what the spirit is saying to the church. This is why it's so important to uh, <laughs> to read your word so you will know the difference between false teaching and false prophets. The body, the body, the 27th verse, it's on your worksheet, 1 mm -hmm. Corinthians 12, 27, it says, now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular, members. Not only are not only are we uh, individual, not only are we individual members, but we are collectively right. members mm -hmm. because the body is made up of particular members, individual right. members. Right. This is what he's saying. So there's no need to be division. There's no need to be divided because Christ is not divided. There is no division in the body. There may be division. He said, he said, where there is uh, jealousy and envy and divisions, he said, are, are, aren't you still carnal? Aren't you still yet carnal? You have to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. 
the body of Christ is not the body. Right. So when you are, so if you and I are divided, then we are not functioning as members of the body of Christ. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Now, and 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 let me say this before I get started. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's not talking about the building. Right. Now, I'm not diminishing or degrading or belittling a building because uh, it is ideal to have an assembling place. Right. Ideal. A lot of the first century church, a lot of the early churches, they assembled in small assemblies and houses. Right. Amen. So you have to, so you have to understand, he's not talking about some mega building, edifice, some mega edifice, beautiful looking edifice. That is not what the body is made up of. And I say that to say this because a lot of us are unsure or leery about like uh, Zooming in attendance or Facebook Live because we have grown so accustomed to a building. And But like I said, I'm not belittling the building. The building is a good thing because it is a good thing to have an assembly place. Mm -hmm. But if you understand the text, He's talking about members of the body. He's talking about you and I. He's talking about us, people. He's not describing a building. No. All right. So, we, you know, we have to, we have to understand what the Spirit is saying to the church. We have, we have a lot of, a lot of you know, these strongholds and a lot of things that hinder us from being what. Uh, the Lord has purposed us to be. The scripture said he he placed he placed the members in the body as it pleased him. Your natural body and my natural body was designed according to God, the master design. Right. Right. So is our spiritual body. So is the church. It is, we read in the 13th verse, he said, We for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. So once again, I, I hate to keep beating a dead horse, <laughs> but those of us that reject the Spirit, if you if you reject the Holy Ghost, well then how are you a part of the body? Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Mm -hmm. If you can, if you reject the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, how then is it possible for you to be a part of the body of Christ? It is not. Moving on. That's not what we're dealing with tonight, but that's just a little aha. He said in the 27th, in the 26th verse, listen to it again. 26th verse, he said, and whether one member suffer, all members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all members rejoice with it. He said, now ye are the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. This is how a body functions. Mm -hmm. If one member of the body is suffering, then the entire body is so. If one member of the body rejoices or is glorified, then the whole body is glorified. He said, now you are the body of Christ because the body of Christ is not divided. It's a unified body. All right. We are not, we are not, uh, we are not a real good representative of Christ if we are if, if, if we are advocates of division. Oh. All right. We cannot be advocates of division. Yeah. We have to understand the body is not the body. Whatever your hang-up is, whatever my hang-up is, if we don't get over it, we'll still have it when the Lord comes because the body is not the body. We dealt with some strongholds last lesson. If we can't get beyond our stronghold, we can't get beyond what we think, our thinking. That is not the Lord's fault. That is not the Lord's fault. Genesis. Go back to creation. It's on the worksheet. Genesis, second chapter, 
verse 23, it's on the creation. It's on, it's on the worksheet, I'm sorry. It said, and, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. He's talking about the body. He's talking about the body. And the body is made up of members. He said, she shall be, he said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Scripture said, for this reason, for this cause, a man should leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife, and they too shall be one, one flesh, one body. The Lord is not divided. Whatever, if we were to continue to, to read, you would have read in there where he's not interested in any schisms in the body. And we'd have to get beyond the point where the body of Christ is divided. We were, we were all baptized into one spirit. Yes. And so our, our gifting, our spiritual gifting is for the edifying of the body in our particular uh, in our particular call or place mm -hmm. or member. Like I say, the, the, the eye is gifted to see, the ear is gifted to hear, and so forth and on. And we can and we cannot be envious of one another's gift because it, it came from the, the spirit. Yes, it comes from God. Okay. So in order to be the body of Christ, we have to function or operate in our gifting. We have to understand that we are members of the body. Members. We are not the body. We are members of the body. Mm -hmm. If we would have kept reading, we would have read that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on, Romans 12 and 5. It says, so, being, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. I'm going to read yeah. that again. Romans 12 and 5. So we, being many, are one body in Christ. And every one members one of another. I often say the most important thing for the church is one another. Mm. <laughs> All right. I know we have a lot of false teachers. We have a lot of false preachers. And they have us excited about a whole lot of stuff. But the most important, the most important thing for the body of Christ is to understand that we are members. And not only are we members of the body, but we are members of one another. Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that. We are members. Mm -hmm. Paul had to address this in the Corinthian church because of the immaturity the worldliness, the uh, you know, there was a lot of thing, you know, there was a lot of things going on. There was even in the fifth chapter of fornication. It said not, not even like the Gentiles would do. It was a whole lot of immaturity in this church, a whole lot of division, mm -hmm. a whole lot. So he had to address that. And as members of the body, we want to make sure that we are not divided. Right. We want to make sure we are not divided. With, 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 you know, especially, especially with uh, other members in particular of the body. <laughs> we want to make sure that our reason for not fellowshipping or whatever is is legit. Mm -hmm. Now, do we have? Do you have a legit reason? <laughs> there is some, but we're not dealing with them tonight. There is some. We're not dealing with them tonight, though. We're dealing with the, we're dealing with the fact that uh, we are members of the body of Christ, and not necessarily members of the building. Right. That is messing up 
a lot of Christians because being a member of the building is what's messing us up spiritually. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a member of this building, then I, you know, I'm, I'm hesitant or, or lack fellowship with you because, or rather because you're not a member of this building. And that's not the body of Christ. Amen. The, the, Jesus told uh, Jesus told his disciples that he said he said other sheep he said I have he said I must bring them in also right. other sheep that he had so we must understand that uh, though all of us that are baptized by the one spirit are baptized into the one body whether you whether you are in Corinthians or whether you're in Rome, whether you're in Jerusalem, whether you're in Antioch, wherever you were, you were baptized into the one body. We have to understand that. And it wasn't and it, and it wasn't addressing the building. The one time when when I, I'm not gonna say the one time, but one of the times when they addressed the building, Jesus messed them up. They were addressing the building, but he was addressing himself. He said, he said, I, that, he said, I'm going to destroy that building in three days. I didn't going to be destroyed. Right. And they thought he was talking about the brick and mortar, the building. He said, right. he wasn't talking about that building, but we, that ain't what we did with these one. But yeah, let me keep going. <laughs> First Corinthians 6, uh, 15. 17 so let's go there because only 15 is on the worksheet 1st Corinthians 6 15 through 17 verse 15 says know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot God forbid 16 what Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For the two says he shall be one flesh. 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. We read on the onset that we were all baptized by the one spirit into the one body. Uh -huh. I'm going to reiterate it again. We must have the Holy Ghost. We must be born again of the water and the Spirit. We cannot uh, refuse or reject the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus came. John, the Baptist, the forerunner, told you ago, he said, I indeed baptize you with water to repentance. He said, but he that cometh after me, it is he that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. So the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost cannot be refused or rejected because that is the entry unto the, that is the, the birthing or the entry into the body of Christ. Right. We have to be born again. We, we are not members of the body because we repeated after the preacher some prayer or some saying. All right. That's false teaching once again. And it doesn't have to be for you because we have the truth of the word. Mm -hmm. Ephesians, Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 22 and 23. On the worksheet, I think they're both on the worksheet. Okay. 22 says, and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. 23, which is his body fullness of him that filleth all in all. Lesson title tonight, now ye, now ye are the body of Christ. Amen. Ephesians, Paul addressed the Ephesians and he's straightening them out, telling them mm -hmm. and has put all things under his feet and has given him to be the head over all things to the church. The head. All right. If he's the head, we are the body. Mm -hmm. We are not the head. We are the body. Amen. And the scripture said members 
in particular. Uh, I wish I could shout. I can't shout. <laughs> I, can't, I can't shout. It's 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 crazy because, uh, like I said, we have we have polluted, diluted, and but the scriptures, like you said, we have made uh, my house a, a den of thieves. Mm -hmm. As I, we made the church a den of thieves instead of the house of prayer. I don't know. Ephesians 4 and 12. We're moving on, baby. Ephesians 4 and 12. It says, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. If we was to go to the text and read that, he would be telling you and I about the gifts that he has gave, gave unto, unto men. And the gifts, this is what Paul was trying to tell the Corinthians, just as he's trying to tell the Ephesians. It's the gift. It's the, it's the gift that the Lord has gifted us with. Right. He said they are for the work of the ministry. Mm. They are not for individual glory. They are for the work of the ministry for the edifying or for the building or the strengthening or the building up mm -hmm. of the body of Christ or the members in particular <laughs> the members mm -hmm. in particular and members collectively this is what the gift is for mm -hmm. no, no one person no one person can brag of glory in his in his particular member because God has placed the members in the body as it pleased him Amen. and and the gift that he left unto me he gave unto men is very clear he said it's for the work of the ministry it's, he said for the perfecting of the saints first of all and bringing us to maturity right. now we it's for the bringing us maturity mm -hmm. it's for the work of the ministry it's for the edifying the body of Christ it's for the building up or the strengthening the body of Christ that's that's what the church is about mm -hmm. that when Christ return his bride will be adorned she will be ready mm -hmm. now how and how and why does the church look like it looks today mm -hmm. I don't know but that yeah. ain't much that ain't me Ephesians 5, 23 and 30 on a worksheet. Ephesians 5, 23 says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. 23, read it again. It's on the worksheet. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the of the body. We're talking about the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Did that did that scripture sound familiar? Sounds like creation. Sounds like the first one we read in Genesis 2 and 23. Mm -hmm. It said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Right. <laughs> the point the point is scripture said God has placed members in the body as it pleased him mm -hmm. from from creation what what we what we must do is function and operate in in uh in the particular membership that we have <laughs> Because this yes. is not this is not new, this is not new to God. This is not new to God. This was God's purpose from the beginning, mm -hmm. and so our uh, our theology and whatever else we want to try to use, 
it will it will not compare. It, it's not it's not going to help us. It's not going to help us when that day comes. And this scripture, uh, and if uh, we would, if you would continue to read this, Paul tells him that uh, that this is a great mystery. He said, but he's talking about Christ in the church. He's not talking about the man and the woman. Although they are in one body, one flesh or whatever, he says it's a great mystery and it's a, it's a great parallel and all that good stuff. He said, but he's talking about Christ in the church. Christ in the church. Verse 30, Ephesians 5 and 30 says, For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. There we go. Yes. Sound like creation, though. Know? Mm -hmm. yeah, sound like creation. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we are members of his body, of his flesh, of his bones. So where do we get off establishing a ministry? Amen. Where do we get off establishing salvation? Come on, somebody. All right. This was, uh, we, wasted, we wasted a lot of time trying to create and, in, and trying to create and impress people. For what? I don't know. For why? I don't know. We are the redeemed, purchased possession, and we are, we are awaiting our total redemption. And we're getting out of whack, getting out of whack while we wait. We're going to be like the five foolish birds, mm -hmm. and our lamp's going to go out. Wow. Colossians 1.24 Colossians 1.24 says uh, who now rejoice in my suffering for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake which is the church which is the building <laughs> no not talking about the building he's talking about the members He's taught, Paul is telling them who now rejoice in my suffering for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. The church is the body of Christ. This is what we've been saying for a long time. The church is the body of Christ. And as Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourself likewise. Now, Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church. He said, in the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Paul is saying, I fill up in this suffering, my suffering. Mm -hmm. Now, we have already established that the church uh, is the body of Christ. And it is mm -hmm. to suffer for Christ. Mm -hmm. What is the church? The church is members in particular mm -hmm. and members collectively. Mm -hmm. you, have, yeah. you have fingers that are members, and then you have fingers that are part of the hand, which is the body. <laughs> the fingers are the body, the hand is the body. You see what he's saying? He's saying we are members. Mm -hmm. uh, let me go back and read that again in uh, in Romans 12 and 5. He said, uh, so we being many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another. So mm -hmm. when he's already told church that the gates of hell is not going to prevail, he told the church that you're going to have to endure suffering. Right. Now we understand the church is the members of the body. We'll get it in a minute. <laughs> so hop skipping, and, hop, skipping, and jumping is pointless. Hop, skipping, and running and jumping is pointless. Because you and I are, are called or appointed to suffer, mm -hmm. affliction. Because we are the, we, 
We are the body of Christ. As Jesus suffered in the flesh, arm yourself likewise. Mm -hmm. Now, understanding that that is likewise as members in particular, and that is likewise as members of the body. Right. So there's no way, there's no getting around it. <laughs> <laughs> We've already established the fact that we are the members of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Hear what the yeah. Spirit is saying to the church. We need, we, the Lord is trying to get us ready. And we have to stop, we have to stop uh, scripture uh, I believe I believe uh, Samuel told Saul or told somebody that obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice and to hearken is better than a battle ram. Mm -hmm. And last one we're going to give you up uh, Colossians Second chapter, 19 verse. Mm -hmm. Get it on your worksheet or just miss it? Colossians, second chapter, 19 verse. Mm -hmm. It says, And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. Mm -hmm. And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministry. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go back and if you read this, this is Paul chastising, talking about uh, the false teachers and false mm -hmm. prophets who he said are intruding into angel worship and not knowing the stuff that they're dealing with and this and in, in this verse he is telling the Colossians church that that the false prophets don't hold the, their head which is Christ in honor mm -hmm. he said not and not holding the head mm -hmm. they the false teachers the false pastors and prophets and teachers they don't hold they don't hold the head in honor they hold it in in false in craftiness in gain and whatever. He said, but they don't hold it in honor. They don't hold the head in honor. And he and he's telling the church, he said, look, from which all the body, from which us, all the members of the body, by joints and bands, this is how we are nourished. Mm -hmm. We're nourished by uh nourishment ministry. This is how, this is how. This is how the head serves the body, or the head serves the body. Mm -hmm. The head serves the body, not the foot don't serve the body, the head serves the body, the brain serves the body. The, the foot functions in the body. Okay. So that plane, the elbow don't, you know, it serves the body by operating in its function. Right. But he's saying, but he's saying they don't even hold the head. They don't even esteem or recognize the head. He said, from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministry. Right. We have to understand how we are uh we are served. We, we are nourished. We are uh we function, we operate by the head. Yes. And the false teachers and the false prophets, they're not they are not honoring our head, <laughs> so to speak. And so we pray that you got something out of the word of God and understand that uh understand that in order to be the body of Christ and members in particular, mm -hmm. we have to be baptized by the one spirit into mm -hmm. the body. Mm -hmm. Just read that. So as it is always, mm -hmm. 
we uh, if we urge you, encourage you to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. for remission of your sins and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Except the man is born again of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We must, by the one spirit, be baptized into one body. And so we pray that you receive something from the word of God. We thank God for you that you continue to follow the word of God and fellowship the new beginning community mm -hmm. church. We pray that you would continue to fellowship with us Continue to follow the word of God. If you ever have any questions, any concerns about any of the scriptures, lesson topics, or anything that we teach according to the Bible, give us an email at nbc4church uh, at gmail.com. We're going to pray and we're going to give you a bow heads. Be gracious to Heavenly Father in your precious name. We thank you, Jesus. Um, Tonight, thank you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. We thank you for allowing us to be in your presence again. We thank you for being, for suffering with us, being in our presence. We thank you for your word, for, for you are preparing us, Lord God, for your return. That your body would be without schisms, Lord God, that we would be a prepared body, that we would be ready. And we thank you, Lord God, for the life-giving opportunity that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for the spirit of life, the, the Holy Ghost. We ask that you would take us from this place, never from your presence. Bring us back again at the appointed time, and we'll praise and glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.